Hello and welcome to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Today's video, an exclusive interview with former commandant forward and current FC Basel attacker Liam Miller. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. We're pushing for a thousand subscribers at some point in the next few months. Do I set any proper deadlines on it yet? But if you want to speed up that process for us, then please do subscribe. It would be much appreciated. It helps us continue to bring content like this out on a regular basis. Today's video with, as already mentioned, with Liam Miller, he's just secured a move to FC Basel in Switzerland, one of the biggest teams in Switzerland, the regulars on the European stage as well. So should be plenty of interesting stuff in this from his move to FC Basel, of course, was last at Liverpool, became the first Canadian to play for Liverpool, of course, as well. Liam Miller, a Canadian international. Bits about his time at Anfield, why thought he had to move on from Liverpool this summer, sealing a seven-figure exit amid interest from the EFL. But, of course, touching on his two spells at Kilmarnock, once under Steve Clark and then under Angelo Alesso, and briefly Alex Dyer as well. So plenty of stuff in this for Kilmarnock, Liverpool, FC Basel, all of that involved in this. So should be plenty of interesting stuff. If you haven't already subscribed, as I have mentioned, please do so. It would be greatly appreciated. Like the video, let us know what you think of it in the comments as well. Who would you like to see interviewed next? All that different type of things. We'll have another exclusive interview towards the end of the week as well, probably Sunday, on top of our look ahead and previews of the Premier Sports Cup last 16 and the European ties involving Scottish clubs this week. That's enough of my ramblings for now. Enjoy your chat, William. If you haven't already subscribed, as I've mentioned what seems like a thousand things in this video, please do subscribe. It is much appreciated. And until next time, take it easy. Bye, Liam. How's the, the last few weeks been for you? Has it been, I can imagine, moving abroad in the middle of the pandemic has brought its challenges itself, never mind moving to a big club like Basel? Uh, yeah, it's, um, obviously it's a bit, you know, I'm still trying to get settled and trying to... Uh, find my feet a bit. Um, you know, um, I came in right off the off season, so you know, I'm still trying to get my minutes up and um, kind of get up to speed with the rest of the team because they were in uh, like three weeks before I was. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. So like, yeah, it's been it's, it's been a little bit challenging. You know, I've you know a new country. They don't speak the same language as me, and um, yeah, it's a little bit a um, little bit challenging, but. You know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I decided to come over here because I wanted to, you know, push my comfort zone and and uh, try and, you know, see what I can get out of myself, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's been a bit uh, challenging, but, you know, that's expected, you know, as new country, new team, everything. So, yeah, I'm sure I'll uh, be up to speed in no time. So. Yeah. Must, you must have seen something to sort of lure you there because it's quite a four-year deal over there. There's quite the commitment from the club as well, but also from your point of view personally. Uh, yeah, like, you know, I, I see, you know, what the ambitions are for the club. And, you know, for me personally, you know, I want to, you know, win trophies. I want to, you know, play in Europe. And, you know, when Basel came in, it was, you know, it was a huge club that, you know, you that are kind of known in the UK for doing very well in the Champions League. and. <clears throat> Sorry, um, and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, when they came up and, you know, they said they're going to be fighting for titles and fighting to play in Europe, it's it's what I thought would be best in the next step of my career. You know, I could have went, you know, maybe back somewhere in England or whatever, but, um, you know, I thought for, for my next step in the career to push myself, that uh, this would be the best move for me. So. Okay. I'm sure you'd have had the options in the, the EFL after Charlton, maybe even up here, I don't know, but... Um, when you get the chance, I know it's the Conference League this year, but as you know, Basel being in the Champions League, Europa League, especially in the last few years, it's playing on that stage regularly. You, you just can't get the Championship up. You can get Scottish Premiership clubs, but not to the level Basel will be at regularly. Yeah, like 100%. And that's what I was saying before. Like, you know, I could have went to a Championship team or, you know, maybe a Scottish Premiership team, who knows. But uh, yeah, look, like you said, you know, Basel is a huge club with you know, big ambitions. And that's, that's something that I have in my career as well. And that's, you know, the reason why it attracted towards me because, you know, playing in Europe, winning titles, that's, that's what I want. So. 
How have you sort of found the first few weeks have been a decent start to the season? Yeah, like it's been good. Like the team's been uh, playing well. You know, we, we've won every game we played so far. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's been it's been good. The lads are good. Um, you know, they all speak you know somewhat of English, so if I need to speak to anybody, they <laughs> understand me. Um, but yeah, like uh, yeah, like I said, you know, the, the quality of players is you know it's a it's a bit of a jump for me. It's a bit of a jump from from League One last season. Um, but again, like you know. You know, it's going to take time for me to, you know, get used to who I'm playing with and, and the league and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, like, you know, like I said, it's all part of the process. So. And there was me thinking I was smart Google translating my full email to ask for an interview with you in German to get the, the answer back in English. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, it, it, when you left Liverpool, I feel like in fact, there's somebody I'm sure you'll know, Adam Lewis, who's just came up here. Um, yeah. Um, it just feels like it, at clubs like Liverpool, there's a a stage you get to where it's just like there's so much world class talent in front of you that it's just so you can't really break through. Not through anything you're doing. It's just you've got Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah in front of you. Yeah, that was you know that was always my thing. You know, I always I always believed that you know I could eventually one day get my chance. You know, I never stopped believing that. But you know, it got to a point where for me the likelihood of me getting my opportunity was getting smaller and smaller. Um, and, you know, I think at the stage of the, at the stage of my career that I'm at now, I think when this came around to get a big club and, you know, to have a club that can, you know, believe in me and have uh, faith in me. Um, it was, it was kind of a no brainer for me because, you know, like Liverpool, you know, great, like great club and, everything I'm very grateful for everything they've done but um you know I needed to play regular first team minutes at a at a at a big club and I think that's uh you know the main reason why I took this opportunity yeah yeah because I don't think even though 21 is not like you're not ancient or anything but it's not it's not a youngster anymore I don't think I think the yeah. the age for playing first team football now if you're not playing 19 20 you're probably looking Danny to look elsewhere. Um, I'm assuming you probably felt that way. Yeah, hundred percent. And and like you said, even with Adam too, Adam's gone along with Libby now. And you know, I think he sees, you know, similar things to me where, you know, he he sees a, that we have Robertson and, and Tamiskis at Liverpool. And, you know, is he third choice? Yeah, probably. But, you know, he wants to be playing regularly. He doesn't want to be on the bench. And, you know, like you said, you know, 19, 20 years old, you need to get that first team experience and that's what he's doing and you know from what I've heard he's doing he's doing all right so I'm assuming you've sent him a pair of your Astro boots to play down at the Tony Macaroni or... <laughs> yeah I uh, I told him because he asked me before about uh, Libby and I told him that they play in, in an Astro pitch so I told him to get his Astros ready so yeah. Uh, it's not actually it's not too bad I know it's a pure tangent but it's not actually I know you played on it at Kilmarnock and that it genuinely I know they get absolutely battered up here, right? But they're well. I think grass pitches are better. I'm sure people at the club argue that they aren't the hell forsaken pitches that some people make out to be. I don't think. Yeah, Libby, Libby's wasn't that bad. I think. I think. I think Hamilton's was worse. I oh, think when I played there, I think Hamilton's was worse. But Libby's was okay. It wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, last season was probably was decent for you as well. That Charlton loan, you seem to probably. I had a consistent run of form, perhaps that you perhaps never quite got it come on it for one reason or another, but um seems to really work for you then. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, things happen and you know, I had a great time at Kilmarnock and I'll always I'll always say that, you know, I learned a lot from the two years I was there. But uh but yeah, like the the season or the half season I had at Charles and last season, I think um it really helped me. Um, you know, I gained a bit of form, a bit of momentum. You know, I started to get my stats up a little bit um, in time, and that was something that I think was one of my issues. You know, I was always, I was always somewhat effective. You know, but you know, I never, you know, really had got many assists or many goals or anything. And that's, you know, in football, that's what they kind of judge you on nowadays. So, you know, that's what I needed to improve on. And I went to Charlton, and um, yeah, I, I, I got. A decent amount of assists, you know, a couple I didn't count, which I wasn't happy about. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, I 
I did well and you know I got this move off the back of it so you know clearly I was uh, doing something right yeah that's that's that was what I was aiming for to go there and prove to everybody that you know I can play at a higher level and I think I did that so yeah take you back a bit to sort of your commandment spell where you had more hair on your head than your face at the minute um, <laughs> was it quite a shock that can that was your first loan like proper senior football week in week out under Steve Clark yeah like you know I my time with uh with uh, Steve Clark was very uh was very good I I really enjoyed it even though I didn't you know start every game or you know, I think I only started maybe two games when uh, he was there but you know I could tell that you know he was very very good at what he does you know he he motivated everybody. He knew exactly what the game plan was every game. And yeah, like I learned a lot from just being there. Um, and like, I learned that he also had uh, trust in me. I felt when, when I was there and he felt that I could come in and I could um, do something. So yeah, you know, with, uh, with Steve Clark, I really enjoyed my time there. And then I went back with uh, Alessio and, you know, it obviously, you know, it was a big, uh, it was a big change at the club because, you know, they had Steve Clark for, couple of years and you know he did very very well with the club you know he finished third um you know we got the Europa League stuff and yeah you know we did really well and it was a big it was a bit of a adjustment period I would say probably um and yeah it's just you know think you know things happen to football and you know, things didn't go the way I wanted this to go and I'm sure the way the team thought things were going to go and you know that just happens right so and you just move on and you know, I still take it as a positive being at Kilmarnock because, you know, like I said, I learned a lot in my first loan. I needed to learn what my football was like. I needed to learn, you know, what the business I was going into was like. And, you know, I think in the year I was there, I, I learned a lot. So, Yeah, and I just quite, um, under 23s football is quite cuddly. And I can imagine going to Steve Clark who doesn't smile or anything like that. It was, it was quite the change. Yeah, he actually smiles more than you think. See, people say that people. I've interviewed a few people and you know, I've spoke to Steve Clark a few times at press and that. Say people say he does actually smile. I've yet to see any evidence. <laughs> yeah, he actually does smile more than you think. But yeah, no, he again, like I said, he was a uh, he was a good coach. He was a good guy. He he was good at communicating with me. So yeah, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed working with him. Yeah, do I think in your two spells there? You probably played more under Alessio and then a wee bit under Alex Dyer, but I think it'd be fair to say it was very contrasting in terms of success from under Clark and Alessio. It was, it was all, by the time it got to this, probably in the 12 months you were there, the just changed completely from what it was like, which was understandable because, I mean, it was a golden period for, for Kamarnik under Steve Clark. It was never going to be at that success, success rate all the time. Yeah, 100%. Like, well, like, like I said, I think I think when I came back the second time, it was a transition period, and it's, it's it was just a different type. It was a different environment, you know. Steve Clark, you know, he had his ways, and like you said, it was a golden time for for Kilmarnock during that period. And you know, I think Alessio had a had like a lot of had had big shoes to fill, you know, of course, and you know, it was a bit um, difficult for everybody at the club, and yeah, it was just you know, a transition period and, you know, the club went down last season and, you know, I have, I have hundred percent faith that they can come back up because to be honest, I don't, I, I don't think the club should be in the championship. They should be in the premiership. And yeah, so they just got to do well this season to come back up and stay there. You know? Yeah. It was, there was a lot of questions about Alessio and things like that and his training and things like that, because he did come with a lot of new ideas. He'd been assistant to Antonio Conte, I think, previously before he um, came to Manic. Was, was it, I mean, how was it based on that? Because I've not really got much of an insight into how he actually operated. Yeah, like, like I personally don't think it was uh, horrible. Like, you know, obviously, I'm sure you've heard things and all that kind of stuff, but I, I don't think it was uh, horrible. You know, like, he had you know, a lot of ideas that I see at Liverpool and, you know, all that kind of stuff that um, they do. And yeah, I, I didn't mind it. It was a lot of, uh, you know, kind of slower and kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I was fine with that, you know, a lot of, you know, passing and, you know, shape and all that kind of stuff, which, which was okay for me. Um, 
but yeah, but like I said, I'm sure you've heard things. I'm sure other people have heard things, but it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as some people make it out to be. Yeah, for me, without wanting to bash people, it seemed as if he was trying to carry out training sessions that perhaps he'd worked at Chelsea in these elite level clubs and then trying to take it to Rugby Park in Kilmarnock with some of the players that were there at the time. <laughs> it just doesn't transcend. You need the players to carry out these type of things, and it, it just didn't seem like he managed to get them quick for whatever reason. Yeah, and of course, like you said, you know, I don't, without trying to bash anybody, without trying to be disrespectful, you know, I never want to be like that. But, you know, yeah, I guess, you know, in a way you're kind of right. But, you know, if that's the way that he coaches and that's the way that he does, then, you know, that's, that's, his, that's his job. It's his job to assess the situation and do all that kind of stuff. And, you know, like I said, I don't think it was that bad. But, you know, I'm sure, like I said, you've heard things. So... It was just very bizarre, I thought, because th- even though I'm sure you've seen, you know a lot more than me, even though I know a wee bit, lots of rumblings going on behind the scene, but the club weren't in a bad position when he left. I can mind, I think it was at a Dunfermline presser, um, fifth in the league. Wasn't great football, I don't think form was particularly great, but were better than, I mean, look where they are now. And yeah. seemed to be like they would be stable top six under a so it just, I, for... From minute one, it didn't seem like that was ever going to work long term. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, honestly, like, I, I just remember one day he came in and he said that he got sacked. And, you know, I don't really, I didn't really ask too many questions. It just kind of happened and he kind of walked out, you know. And, you know, we you know, we weren't doing, like, horrible, but we weren't doing as good as we were the season before, right? So I think maybe that's what he maybe got judged on was how good Steve Clark did last year and how we were doing at this moment. But listen, I don't know. I don't know anything about what happened or anything like that. I just know that I didn't think he was that bad. I thought he was actually quite decent. Um, but, you know, yeah, like you said, maybe the style of football wasn't amazing. And, you know, you know, I didn't get to touch the ball too much. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just... You know, I didn't think he he was um, horrible or anything. I thought he was quite decent, to be fair. So. Yeah, I can imagine. I think at times, I think he tried to start playing passing football at the start, and then by the end of your loan, you must have had a sore neck for looking up in the sky, seeing where the ball was going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just doing this the whole time, to be honest. Uh, I was just getting cut broad for it. was like, nah, I'm not for this passing game. <laughs> up the park. Um, but no, but from there... For you, I mean, I think it was like eight weeks Alex Dyer came in and then you were away and then a pandemic hit. So uh, the last five months must have changed somewhat dramatically for you in a personal note. Yeah, like, you know, I was in Chile and then, you know, I got recalled and I went back to Liverpool and I was training for, I don't even know, like a month, two months. And then all this COVID stuff hit and, you know, we, we, we couldn't come in, we couldn't train, you know, we did a lot of our sessions on Zoom, we did a lot of gym work, some running stuff um, with the report throughout the five months, so it was good for that, you know, they helped me, um, you know, get in shape and to do that kind of stuff because, um, you know, I was doing a lot more gym work than I normally would because I don't have to play it on the two games and stuff, so um, that five months I actually felt probably like one of the fittest I felt in a long time, to be honest. Um, kind of use the, the COVID situation as like a, as like a, as like a blessing kind of in disguise to kind of get fit and get a bit bigger and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, like, you know, it, it was a drastic change for, for me and it was for everybody. Um, but I try to use it as the most, I try to look at it in the most positive way I could and try and get something out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. The world works in mysterious ways because that, pretty much recall and mishap at Kilman and whatever was happening behind the scenes there pretty much just allowed you, even though it was only one game, even though it was the mishmash youngest lineup, whatever it was, team against Shrewsbury, you still got that yeah. means of being able to at least play a game at Anfield in front of a crowd in front of the telly and all that. I'm sure you've been asked about it numerous times, but um at least you had that experience. It wasn't just you played under 23 football at the top. Yeah, and that was that was important for me, you know, coming back and playing that game um that was something that you know I since I joined the club I wanted to do I wanted to play for the first team and look you know it was a mismatched 23s team out there but 
at the end of the day, you know, no one really cares who played. I like I played. You know what I mean? Like, you know, people could say, you know, I played for the it was a 23s game for a first team, but at the end of the day, if you look, my I, I won appearance for Liverpool. Like, you know what I mean? So for me, that was a big, a big uh, thing in my career because you know I was the first ever Canadian to play for Liverpool, and you know it was a big honor for me, and you know it was something that that will live that will live with me forever. And you know, even though it was the 23s team out there, you know, it was still a big accomplishment for me. And look, and we still won the game, so you know, it's not like we we got slumped or anything. We still won one nil, and you know, I think I, and I think we dominated that game. So. You know, at the end of the day, we played well and, yeah, we won the game. So. Yeah, that's it. The win bonus is still the same no matter if you're playing Barcelona or Shrewsbury. So, <laughs> so that's, all that, that's all that matters. Yeah. But no, now, around this off then, I mean, you must be... I don't know whether the plan for you is to be around the first team here for um, a year or so and then go out and loan again, but you must be looking forward to sort of having that stability for four or five years that you know where you're going to be and you can see a path to progress and things like that. Yeah, like, well, listen, my my ambition is to, to be in this team to, you know, play every week and to, to do what I can, you know. Like I said at the start, you know, I'm still, you know, getting used to everything, the surroundings, people, you know. It's a different country, different environment for me. I still have to get used to it, so it's going to take time. But, you know, I'm, you know, hopefully in the next year or so, I'll be more of a regular starter for this team. And, um, that's what I want. That's my ambitions. And, yeah, to go on to do better things so that's that's what uh i want so